Hey everybody, welcome back. This is lesson four. Welcome to lesson four. In this lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about what is it that we want students to learn. So here's our lesson four overview. I'm going to start by talking about the sort of language objectives, right? Those learning objectives that are specific to each mode of communication for each course level. We're going to talk a little bit about what communicative competence means because we want students to also develop that. And we also want students to develop global and cultural competencies. So we're going to define that for you. So that's lesson four, the overview. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's talk about the learning objectives for each course that relate to the language, the modes of communication. Um, we have adopted as a department the can-do statements we just saw at the end of the previous video as course objectives for our 101 to 202 courses. So each course level, 101 through 202, has objectives for each mode of communication that reflect a specific performance range or proficiency level target. So for example, for Spanish 101, French 101, Korean 101, our target is novice mid. And again, it's super important that you know what that means. So if you don't know the characteristics of novice mid, Google. Um, for Spanish 102, or French, or Korean, or Portuguese, our target is novice high. For Spanish 201, it's intermediate low, the next level up. And then for Spanish 202, we have the ambitious target of intermediate mid. So it's important, as I was just saying, that you familiarize yourself with the descriptors for each range in communication mode. So if somebody says, I'm not sure that this particular student can engage in presentational writing at the novice high level. Eventually, we all need to know what that means. All right, so using these can-do statements as objectives helps us to design instruction and assessments that are appropriate for the course level. In other words, not too hard or not too easy because oftentimes, I'll walk by a Spanish 101 classroom and I hear an instructor trying to get their students to say something or write something that's way beyond the novice mid-level. It might be an intermediate or an advanced level task. So it helps us to maintain realistic expectations and not demand too much or too little of our students. So here's an example of what these will look like more or less on a syllabus. It might look a little bit different, but you can see that on this 102 syllabus, right, we have the course description, and then we have the section on the student learning objectives that references the can-do statements. And for each mode, interpersonal, presentational speaking, writing, interpretive, we have the specific descriptors that come from the can-do statements, and those are our student learning objectives, the outcomes that we expect. All right, so those were the language mode specific um, objectives. But we also, if you remember back to our approach, our philosophy, we're trying to enhance the communicative competence of our students, right? So that's another thing that drives our course design. We believe in the Department of Modern and Classical Languages that you can't have communicative competence or cultural competence if you don't speak your language well and learn the language of, of other cultures. So this goal relates to our preference for, and we'll talk about this later in, um, I think, video number five, for communicative approaches to teaching and assessing languages. Because for us, learning a language is learning how to communicate well. So here's a definition of cultural competence or some characteristics of cultural competence, right? And there are many definitions of cultural competence, but this is basically what we mean. Um, cultural competence, or I'm sorry, communicative competence. Let me backtrack. I meant to say communicative, communicative competence. There are many definitions. We mean the ability to use language to communicate successfully in various contexts, which requires a couple things. It requires an understanding of the language itself, requires an understanding of, so you need linguistic competence. It means that we need to understand what's appropriate in a particular culture, so it requires um, sociolinguistic competence, okay? And it also requires that speakers understand what are the appropriate communication and effective communication strategies for a particular language community. 
And then finally, another thing that we're trying to do, because the theme of this lesson is what do we want our students to learn? We want them to learn the language, we want them to learn communicative competence, but we also want them to be globally and culturally competent. You might hear terms thrown around all the time like cultural competence or intercultural competency or the university likes to say internationalization, right? We believe all these things, that language is fundamental to all these things. And I'm going to share with you um, a definition of global and cultural competency that was published by the United States Department of Education. They say today more than ever, our students need to be equipped with the critical thinking, communications, socio-emotional and language skills. That should be underlined, language skills to work collaboratively with counterparts in the US and all over the world. Understanding and appreciation, appreciating other parts of the world, different religions, cultures and points of view are essential elements of global and cultural competence. So that's why what we do is so important, right? Students need languages to be successful in a globally diverse, right? Globally, culturally diverse um, marketplace of ideas. And so that's what we're teaching our students in our language classes, hopefully. Um, the Department of Education defines culturally competent individuals, right? As individuals that are, and this is the first thing they say, proficient in at least two languages. So tell everyone you know, that you cannot be globally, culturally competent individual until you're proficient in at least two languages. You can't do it and be monolingual. Um, there are individuals who are aware of differences that exist between cultures, open to diverse perspectives, and so these are things that we're trying to teach our students whenever we get a chance. They're critical and creative thinkers who can apply understanding of diverse cultures and beliefs, so they can apply these understandings, right? in order to work effectively in cross-cultural settings. Can you imagine working in a cross-cultural setting and not speaking the other language? Something we need to convey to our students. And again, culturally competent individuals are able to operate at a professional level. Now, this is not something we're gonna do in Spanish 101. They're not gonna, remember, our learning outcomes for 101 are novice mid. They're not gonna be at that professional level. But if someone went on to major, this is what we would expect. All right, that does it for lesson four. We're halfway done, okay? And uh, we've just been talking about what students, um, what we want students to learn in our classes, in our program. Let's move on to lesson five, where we're gonna talk about assessment, how we measure learning, all right? So I'll see y'all in lesson five. Let's go.